listening to Combat Radio with Ethan Dettenmeyer, right here on L.A. Talk Radio. Well, it's time to shake things up around here, and in studio now are uh, two, two highly, highly diversified and intrepid talents. First is our friend Sandy Fox, who you may know from, well, just about every thing. If you've Actually, if you have ears, you've heard her voice on any one of hundreds of cartoons. And quite frankly, the it's a it's a daunting list of talents, uh, you know. But also, you know, I mean, you're uh, well. Let's introduce your partner in crime here first before we get into the track record, <laughs> Lex Lang, who's one of our favorites. Lex, how are you? Good, good. How you doing? You know, you've voiced everything from Doctor Doom to Atomic Skull, which is my kid's favorite. Yes. You know, so you're big. Yeah, you're yeah. a big fan. Doctor Doom is a fun one. Doctor Doom, indeed. Uh, but you guys have had a pretty extensive. What do you combined uh, six million credits between the two of you? Yeah, no, uh, no, no doubt. Huh? Uh, I mean, really. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, you you uh, have voiced everything from Betty Boop to you know uh, Land Before Time to. I mean, it's unreal what you guys have done. Yeah. I mean, what is there anything? Is there anywhere where your voice does not appear? Yeah. <laughs> is there any is there any voice? Is there anywhere we could go where we would not hear you? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, I mean, even Wreck-It Ralph. Yeah, I just you know? did Wreck-It yeah, Ralph. Yeah, you just did Wreck-It yeah. Ralph, which my kid was, like, in, amazed to hear. That's a great film. And I got to play all the extra screaming candies and little girls. You and, you got, yeah, the, you got you the had to do some bears, screaming candy. The gummy bears. <laughs> <laughs> who, was your favorite, uh, who was your favorite character that you've done? Probably Betty Boop. I yeah. mean, it is an honor to voice. Pretty legendary. Uh, yeah, no doubt. Huh? Absolutely, the first, the queen of cartoons. So, and I yeah. just recently, um, last year, flew to Paris to um, record Betty's voice for the Lancome uh, campaign. So. You no, know it's amazing. Your, that was Your voice exciting. is so signature. <laughs> just normally, like I'm sure, like you know. I don't know you, but I'm sure like in your life you have this voice and you go like, oh, I have this voice. It's sort of unique. Well, this it voice sound caused, like anybody else's voice. Yeah. This voice has caused a lot of problems when Lex is out shopping. And he says, oh, honey, I'm right here. And like little kids are like, don't call me that. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. amazing. Yeah, it's <laughs> or it's when it. solicitors call the house and they ask if my mom's home. You yeah. Know, so oh, isn't that a great way so, to get out of it, though? Oh, if I don't want to talk to him, I'm just like, la, 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 playing with my Barbie, you know. Or if I do want to talk to him, I'll right. just be like, hold on. That's amazing. That's amazing. Hi, can I help you? Oh, uh, that's unreal. <laughs> yeah. You guys are up to a lot of things. I mean, you got the Phoenix Comic Con coming up, and you've got a lot of interesting things. But let's jump around real quick. Okay. Um, Lex, you yes. are you're uh, you're quite. Uh, you just did a. <laughs> you we had talked yesterday a little bit, and you were telling me this hilarious role you did on regular show where you you play a dude living in a shag rug or something. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was kind of a it was kind of a Dennis Hopper. Uh, esque character that was just hilarious. I mean, the show's funny as it is, and these guys are just super talented writers, and you know they wrote this character that is off the wall, and it, it'll probably be on the air in you know a few months because they have to animate to the, the recording that we did. Right. But it's just hilarious. You guys both have crazy voices. Like as I just sit here, it's that your voices are so amazing. <laughs> they are. They're they're so easy to listen to and so, so nice. Like, as opposed He's to listening, listening to your voice, voice e- Ethan. Which is like what? A propaganda film what, what, from like 1940 what, Germany? What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sort of. No, no, there's just something magical. It's like they're so unique. Aww, they're so unique. Thank you. Ethan climbs aboard the Hindenburg. <laughs> yeah, it's so amazing. Go, yeah. yeah. You That's know, a talent. These are talented people. <laughs> Lex, we should, we should pimp you two out for uh, doing commercials for us. So yeah, I don't absolutely. have to do them. So we can take it up a notch in sort of talent. Instead of me shouting at someone saying, get this pizza, yeah. you know, you can... Uh, yeah, yeah. You know. Well, every time you do a commercial spot, you have put the word fuck in there. I know, I can't help yeah, myself. Just, I try to... That's hard. The yeah. F-bomb. Yeah, I try to work past that. <laughs> Something you're doing, though, that was really cool is uh, uh, you, you're you're pretty good, Lex, at impressions. Yes. And uh, Walken being one of them. Owen Wilson yeah, being one of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, you know, impressions are a lot different than an impersonation. Impersonation is when you get dressed up and you do the makeup and you do everything and you really impersonate the character. And then there's impressions where you kind of get a vibe for what the the essence of the celebrity might be. Mm-hmm. And then I also do something called celebrity voice matching, which is where if if the film has been cut already and they've already had the celebrity in to do their voice work, they'll they may come up with some new dialogue or a new scene or a new edit, and they'll need an actor to come in to do some voice matching to add a line or two here right. or there for actors. So yeah, um, 
I, I do a little bit of the latter two. I do impressions, and I also do voice matching in Hollywood. So um, they do a lot of that whenever they're they're sanitizing a, a, a movie for regular television, right? Yeah, they do yeah. that too, yeah. especially in that case, whether they're doing it for airlines or for TV versions. So, so. give us a can you give us a, a sample of, of both? Something? Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, so like. Let's start with walk-in, for example. You know, um, I, I do a little thing in some of my um, workshops that is uh, teach the whole class how to do some walk-in. And when nope. you're doing when you're doing anybody, what you want to do is you want to be able to hear what the texture of their voice is, where their pitch lies, and also if there's a song in their voice. So what I do for the whole class, and we can all do this together, and the whole listening audience can do this along. <laughs> Now, um, this is exciting. <laughs> this is exciting radio. Here. So we take the word crazy, and anyone can just say crazy, and it doesn't sound like anybody. But if you want to do it sort of like walk-in, what you do is first listen to the, the song that is in his voice a lot, which is tends to be, uh-uh, uh-uh. He, he kind of goes, uh-uh, uh-uh, you know, when he's saying things. And so if you put the word crazy, you go, crazy, you have a little bit of that walk-in feel, and then you add a little bit of a New York accent, so then you go, Cra- crazy, you know, your dad was crazy, you know, and you start to get a feel for that character. Whereas Owen Wilson, he has more of a, he's sort of like defending himself, you know, he wants to prove that he's your friend still, you know, so you might say to him, like, Owen, why did you do that to me? I mean, I was waiting for you, you left me without a ride, and Owen would be like, no, you're my dog, I would never do that to you. No, you're my compadre, you know, like, and it's like, (laughs) when he gets into it, whereas Morgan Freeman is kind of a, a storyteller at all times. Like if you were his roommate, you might get bored with him after a while because you might have coffee in the morning. Like, hey, Morgan, how's your morning going? And he might be like, I woke up this morning, had a cup of coffee. It was very good. And the sun was shining. Very nice day today. You know, and he's very kind Absolutely. of relaxed and That's amazing. calm. And, and um, you know, Sean Connery uh, has kind of a gravel in his voice that's very glottal. So, uh it's a lot of that going on while he speaks. So you put a little bit of a Welsh accent. You you loosen up some dentures that he has so that your S's sound like SH's. And, and then after a while, you're starting to talk like this. So you say, hello there. It's Sean Connery on L.A. Talk Radio. You know, so you you know can, that's like having Derek Forbes back on. <laughs> that is like having yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, you know, and, and that's basically, you know, you have to dissect a voice before you can start doing impersonations awesome. and things like that, you know. That is so awesome. It makes for a lot of fun. And you said you you know you you would you do this for a class so people can can people take classes from you? Well, that you can. Uh, Sandy and I do a workshop once or twice a year. We haven't done it last year because of other engagements that we had. But um, when we do an appearance like at the Comic Cons, we'll mm-hmm. have usually a workshop where people can come in and learn all about voice acting and what it takes to be a voice actor and the differences between animation and anime and and commercial work and that sort of thing. <laughs> You're listening to Combat Radio with Ethan Dettenmeyer, right here on L.A. Talk Radio. 